Welcome one, welcome all, and welcome to another Krebs Coho replay cast. This time around, we get to know your crew. Okay, so getting to know our crew, that is kind of a very important thing about this game, World of Tanks. You have the crew function. If you guys look on the left hand side of the of this uh, screen, in my uh, very pretty garage, I don't even know what this is. This looks like more like an air hanger rather than a normal tank garage. But anyway, so if you look on the left hand side of the screen, we've got a whole crew over here. And these guys, it depends on which tank you have, but some tanks have smaller crews, some tanks have bigger crews. Depends how big your tank is. But this tank destroyer that I have, the Jagdpanzer IV, um, has four members. And basically they all do different things. If you guys look, this one is highlighted with bullets. So that means he is the loader. That means if he gets killed, then you're going to be loading your guns very slowly. And that means you're going to be shooting at a much slower rate. Now then, what is this guy? He is the driver. Basically without him, I believe you can drive at about the same speed. However, your maneuverability will not be the same. Uh, this is the gunner and he has to do with the aim time so if you do not have this fellow then you can sure as hell bet that you're going to be very inaccurate. Um, and we have the commander who has to deal with general sort of stuff and the sight range. Um, I'm not exactly sure if he's the communications guy as well as in um, how far you can communicate with tanks in between but who knows. Anyway, so just taking a look at all these guys, you can pr you can actually change the names of the guy of of your crew members uh, with uh, gold, I believe. But let's take a look at my crew. This is Hunter Officer Alaric Paul. Wow. Okay, fair enough. So I'm guessing this is sort of funny. Let's do some uh, translations into English. So um, Paul, I'm guessing must be Paul. Um, we have Hunter Hunter Feldwebel uh, Star. Um, I'm guessing maybe that in English his name would be Star. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure. Unterfeld Vebel Juringer. Um, no idea what that might be. And Feld Vebel Schmidt Thuber. I can tell you that there's going to be no name in English whatsoever for that. Maybe Schmidt. But then again, Schmidt isn't really a common first name. Anyway. So that is the crew explained. Very important guys, the higher their uh, percentages, the more effective they are. So you can initially get the get them traded up to 50% for free, you can get them to 75% uh, for a bit of silver, or you can get them to 100% with a bit of gold. 200 gold each of them to get them to 100%, so that is quite costly. Anyway, so let's take a look at equipment now. Um, I've got three uh, equipment for my tank destroyer and these are just what I've seen from recommendations. I've got the camouflage net which basically makes me 25% harder to see. Um, I have the binocular telescope which looks like sort of like bug eyes to me. Looks kind of odd but that gives me plus 25% view range for a stationary vehicle. I believe you have to be stationary for six seconds for it to take effect and obviously that's not going to be good for if you're going to be a scout because when are you going to be sitting around for six seconds if you're Tank destroyer is absolutely perfect. I've also got improved ventilation class 2. Um, that gives plus 5% to all skills for all crew. Okay, now this is what I want to talk about. Right, um, there's a choice between going for the improved ventilation class 2 or going for your, where is it, where is it? Medium caliber tank gunner ram, gun rammer, and that decreases the loading time by 10%. So, I'm not exactly sure if this is how it works, but I'm guessing that the higher the skill um, on the uh, gunner, the faster you shoot. And I'm guessing that if it was, uh, if you had the rammers, for example, that would be equivalent to having my gunner at 101% rather than the 91%. I'm guessing that's how it is. Um, but I have the ventilation system, and basically, I'm guessing with the ventilation system, he would be working at 96% rather than 91%. I think that's how it works. But the way to see it is that um, the advantage over over the uh, t the rammer over the ventilation class 2 is that there's a 5% bonus and I'm not exactly sure if that is 100% correct but in my opinion maybe in my head that that's how it's sort of working um, maybe that's true maybe it's not so the good thing about the ventilation class is that it helps the skills for all your guys so it's not only the gunner but it's the driver it's the aimer it's the commander and another nice thing, I think we'll just get into the uh, into a battle and I'll keep on talking, 
Here we go. Another nice thing is that the commander also gives um, a bonus to all the crew members under him. So say at 100%, if your commander is at 100%, then he would be giving a bonus of 10% to each and every guy. So very useful to be doing that. But I believe it also works a bit differently. Say if he was at 90%, then he would give a bonus of 9% to all the guys. So the higher the commander, obviously the better, right? Okay, so let's focus on this game. I was actually sort of thinking to myself, you know, there's going to be eventually a time where I've pretty much talked about all the basics of this game and pretty much everybody's going to know all the uh, tips that I'm giving out. So eventually I'm going to have to just cast the games as they are and cast the battles that are happening at hand. And so I think this is what I'm going to try to do this time around. I'm just going to focus on this battle and what is happening. So bear with me and let's do this. Okay, so this map is Malinovka. I actually very like this map. It was one of the first maps I played when I first started this game. And, well, it's pretty cool, I suppose. There's two... Well, there's actually multiple directions you can go in. You can go along this right-hand side. You can go along the center. You can go along the uh, big hill up there. And, oh my god, we are already getting rushed? Come on, this is too early. Um, there appears to be a few uh, scouts. Already one of the opponents, two of the opponents are eliminated. Wow, that is very early. This uh, scout just up there is being very, very cocky and just getting right up, up, right on up into the faces of the enemy. And here we go. I can see a guy and I'm shooting away at him. Funnily enough, I'm actually missing him. And I'm using the 7.5 centimeter Stuk uh, gun and I absolutely love it. Um, so I'm very good at destroying the enemy. I've in my last game that I played, my first one today, I got three kills, so I'm very happy with that. Um, I do believe I saw an Object 704 there, and uh, Object 704, I believe, is a very heavy tank. I believe that actually might be the top tank, or tank destroyer, possibly. Um, so I'm just looking at the opponents and what they have, and yes, they have Object 704. Oh my God, do they really expect a uh, Jagd Panzer? to be able to even do, a, I don't know, anything against this thing? See, I'm just dinging him all the time. This isn't fair. Uh, there we go. I managed to take 7% off of him, and he's not moving for some reason. And if you guys notice, just in front of me, my screen isn't vibrating anymore when I am uh, shooting. And this was actually a recommendation by somebody on the channel, and I'm actually very appreciative of them telling me so. I was thinking, uh, what is this shake going to do? The shake is probably going to be useless. It's not going to do anything. But I turned it off, and it's actually a lot better now. Now I don't go spraying up into the air like that every time I shoot. Um, the gun is just basically uh, stationary and chilled out, so it's not spazzing or anything. I totally recommend anyone to go for that and turn off the shake it's just it's obviously gonna reduce the realism in the game but it's I don't know it's not not necessary but I would put it next to a long necessary because it helps actually so much so definitely go for that non shake and yep makes life a lot easier so what is going on at the field there's a guy somewhere up there and there's a whole bunch of battling going on over there so let's see how what are we what are we doing in terms of kills um it is apparently six to three and this is what doesn't make sense it says six to three but apparently four of our guys are dead so shouldn't it be four um i'm guessing the computer or the system or something the game must have uh, forgot how to count or something like that i guess computers aren't absolutely perfect but it seems like it's six to three maybe that just has to do with kills and maybe somebody dropped i have absolutely no clue to be honest um if you know then let me know so, how are we going to actually do in this game? I'm not exactly sure. They've got Object 704. That's such a heavy tank. This is going to be even... It's going to be really hard to even combat that. I mean, we've got a few VKs. We've got Loav, um, Fernands. But, really, it's going to be difficult to even take those uh, tank stories on. I mean, if they're just going to be camping back, um, back there, it's going to be very difficult to do anything. So, I'm going to follow this uh, tank over here, the VK and just support him I think just because I don't want to stick around all the time and just wait and wait and wait that's a bit boring um, but ready we see a guy down here I'm gonna start engaging him when possible and well he's already dead no he must have disappeared instead this guy is taking a bit of shots from somewhere from just thin air ghost shots but there are still two artillery tanks alive and oh my god I'm being shot at already 
So take a shot, ricochet, that didn't help, and my tracks are taken out. This is not looking good. Maybe I can get one final shot. Please, please, please let me take him out. Yes! One kill. I am mutual. I have done not a good job, but neither have I done a good job. Does that make sense? Basically, I have done mutual. I'm not a winner or a loser. So let's see what's going on over here. There's an object, or no, SCU. That's a lot better. I'll take on an SU, but not a normal tank. So one more shot and I'm off. I'm off skis. Now I'm off skis because it's likely that the artillery is closing in on me. And that tank that SU was taken out by this VK over here. Very powerful gun indeed. I believe he must have got a front armor shot. And he managed to take it out. So well done to Mr. VK over there. And what is this? Mr. KV is rolling up beside me. Mr. KV wants a bit of a punch out. And looks like in the chat, Backy PL is sort of raging at the artillery. Now this is a sort of funny thing in this game. A lot of people hate the artillery, and they think they should, it should actually be removed. Um, the funny thing is that I was actually watching this one guy's channel, and he was doing an interview with uh, one of the developers from World of Tanks, and they were saying, "No, we will not remove the uh, artillery from the game. It's very specific." Um, that there's a lot of balancing that goes into it. Basically, if you just had tanks, then everyone would be sort of camping, or everyone, or the higher tanks, the higher tier tanks would basically be the the monsters of the field. They could easily take out the lower tier tanks, and in a way, I have to agree with that. The artillery is supposed to be sort of the uh, measures of balancing out the higher tiers with the lower tiers, and basically. You know, obviously it's very frustrating being ghost killed by a artillery gun, but the thing is you gotta live with it and just respect the fact that they're in here in this game for a reason and without it then you'd have a lot of a worse game. It's kind of unfortunate that you might get struck in by a artillery, but then again it really comes down to your playstyle and just learning how to play this game properly. And now I really don't like saying this or telling people off, but it's basically just that thing, learn to play, right? So, here we go, taking out that. Very nice, very nice. GW Panther is gone. So, I believe that is one artillery cannon taken out by me. So, I'm happy, happy, happy. Um, but basically, as I was saying, just learn to play the game and... There we go, he's taken out. Learn to play the game just because you need to accept the fact that there's going to be artillery in this. And you just need to learn how to avoid it, really. Okay, so they have two guys left and we have... Three, six, eight. So it looks like we're going to be winning this one. So I'm quite happy with this cast. Looks like it's going to turn out to be a good one. Now I'm going to be be uh, a bit bold and go Rambo straight into the front lines of the opponents. Hopefully I won't be artillery striked. Obviously this uh, tank over here is probably going to see me very shortly. And instead he is eliminated. And it's just one last tank somewhere. One l last SPG should I say. Just out there. So let's find him. He's probably hiding in the back somewhere over here, and yes he is. However, it doesn't look like I'm going to manage to take him out in time before somebody else. Obviously I want to get the kill, but I doubt it's going to happen. So let's see. Closing in, closing in. He's hiding behind the building, so he's just making this much more difficult for me. Come on, just come out and let me kill you. <laughs> come on. Okay, just chasing him down. There he is, he's taken out by an artillery strike. As soon as he got out of that cover, then he was blasted away. Okay, so we got a decent amount of experience for that, and credits, so I'm quitting out of this. And just one last thing I want to mention before I call it quits for today. I'm at 8,000 experience and 627 free experience. I'm very close to unlocking my 8.8. .8. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm going to actually get it, despite the fact that I was thinking I might just go for Jagdpanther. I was hearing that I should actually go for the 8.8, .8, so I'll try it and see how it goes. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoy the cast. I hope you learned a little uh, about the crews and the equipment, if you didn't already know that. And, well, I hope you all have a very nice day. So anyway, this is Krebs Co., and bye bye